Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today, I'm going to make an ice dyed geode shirt. As usual, the shirt was washed and dried. Then I soaked it in a soda ash solution for at least 20 to 30 minutes, wrung it out of my pan to spin dryer, and so it's just barely damp. The shirt's also turned inside out. To start a geode, I'm going to find an area on the shirt where I'd like the center of the geode to be, then pinch that area with my fingers and lift the shirt up off of the table. I'm going to slide my other hand down to where I'd like the bottom of the geode to be, and that's where I'm going to start tying with sinew. I think I get more of a natural or organic tie or feel to the geode if I start tying it from the bottom. That kind of avoids having that bullseye look with the geode. I'm making a couple of wraps with the sinew, then pulling it as tight as I can. Then on some of the lines, I'll wrap the sinew around a couple extra times and pull it tight again. I'm going to make sinew lines all the way down this geode. And since I don't want the center to be a bullseye, every now and then I'm going to take that fabric from the end and push it or poke it into the middle, just rough it up and mess with it a little bit. I want to try to keep the end of the geode kind of messy. This is one design that tying it a little bit messy actually makes it look better. Since all geodes are very different in the way that they look, I want to try to keep them pretty random. So I'm making some of them larger and some smaller, and I'm going to vary the amount of lines that I put in the geodes and the distance between each of the lines. I really want to keep it as random as possible. Once I'm finished tying the first geode, I'm going to find an area on the shirt where I'd like to begin another one and repeat the process. I also don't care if one of the geodes starts, say, on the front of the shirt and it wraps around to the back of the shirt, or if it starts on the shirt and wraps over to the sleeve. I want to just let them flow naturally. Because the sinew is wax coated, everywhere that I place a sinew line, the dye isn't going to be able to get underneath that area. So these are going to be white lines in the shirt.
Okay, so I'm finishing up my last geode that I'm going to be able to tie on the shirt. And as you can tell, there is a little bit of space in between each of these geodes on the shirt. To add a little bit of design into that area, I'm going to flatten out my geodes as well as I can. And I'm going to add some sinew lines into this space. I'm going to randomly add lines and try to pull them pretty tight. This will at least add some white lines into the middle of the design. You can just leave it alone if you want to and leave it just the way it is. Sometimes some of the geodes are sticking up a little bit more than they are on this shirt. So it's not always possible to add these additional lines into the shirt and get the geodes to lay as flat as I did on this one. Okay, so now that the shirt is tied, I'm going to go ahead and set it aside for a few days and let it dry out completely. Because each one of these geode ties is really thick. If I go ahead and try to apply the dye right now, I'm going to end up with a lot of white area right in the middle of these geodes. I don't want that. I mean, I don't mind if there's a little bit of white in the geodes because that kind of adds to the design but I don't want a whole lot of white. I want them to be really well saturated. I'm going to ice dye this shirt and I'm gonna dye it on a rack. So I need to make myself some form of ice barrier to keep the dye and the ice on top of the shirt. So to do that, I'm gonna use some silicone cake molds. I have a link down below in the description for this video for where I purchased these silicone cake molds. I'm putting them as close to the side of the geode as I can and then I'm using some wooden clothespins to attach them to the rack. The closer you can get the silicone cake mold up next to the geode, the better it is to kind of help keep the ice on the geode and some of the dye too. I really like using these cake molds for ice dyeing. After the shirt is completed, I can just wash them in a little bit of soap and water and reuse them. So there are several ways that you can apply dye to a geode shirt. You can either randomly sprinkle different colors of dye onto the shirt, or you can apply dye to each of the individual sections or areas on the geodes. I'm going to kind of do a combination of both today. On the actual geodes, I'm going to sprinkle the dye into specific areas, but then the additional ties that we made in the center part of the shirt I'm going to kind of randomly add dye to those areas. So at the very end of each geode or what is going to be the center of the geode, I'm going to add some glacier blue from Dharma Trading Company. I don't want to cover the entire center of the geode with glacier blue because I'm going to go back in with another color. I'm using some stainless steel lab spoons to apply the dye with. I really like these spoons. They're nice and smooth and so the dye flows easily off the ends of them. And they come in a variety of sizes. There's a link down below for where I purchased these as well. In the end section along with the glacier blue, I'm also going to add a little bit of peacock blue. What I normally try to do whenever I make a geode shirt is I look on the internet and try to find some photos of really cool geodes. Then I pull out all of my color swatches and try to match some of the colors in those geodes. So the one that I'm referencing had a couple of different colors in the center of the geode. And so that's what I'm trying to do for this shirt. I don't own the rights to those photos, so I can't really put them into my video. From here on out, all of the other sections of the geode are just going to be one color. So the next color I'm using is Grecian Sea from Dharma. Oh, by the way, as I'm doing this, I'm also wearing my respirator. 
Whenever you mess with or use the powdered dye, because it's such a fine powder, you need to wear a respirator and protect your lungs from inhaling the powder. Now I'm adding sea foam from Custom Colors. Mermaid's Dream from Dharma Trading Company. Dharma's Kingfisher Blue. I want to separate the Kingfisher Blue and the Mermaid Blue, so I'm going to leave a blank space between these two colors and I'm going to come back in in a minute with a different color. Okay, I'm using blue MX2G from Custom Colors, and I'm gonna add that to the blank areas that I left between the Mermaid's Dream and the Kingfisher Blue. The next color I'm using is Caribbean Blue from Dharma Trading Company. I know I'm using a lot of colors, but if you've kind of lost track of what they are, if you look down below this video in the description, I list all the colors that I've used and where I purchased them. So on a few of the geodes, I've run out of sections and on a couple of the geodes, I have full sections left. So I'm going to go ahead and add Tropical Dream from Dharma Trading Company. And then at the end of each of the other geodes, I'm going to add a small line of the Tropical Dream. And now since I'm out of all of the sections on the shirt, in this one little center section, I'm going to randomly add lines of color. So I'm just going to go back through the other colors that I've applied on the shirt and add a little bit of those colors to this middle area.
Now that the entire shirt is covered in dye, I'm going to add an additional sprinkle of soda ash over the top just to make sure that when the ice melts and runs through the shirt that I still have plenty of soda ash left in the shirt to react with all the dye. Then I'm going to load the ice onto the shirt. Then on top of the ice, I'm going to add a small sprinkle of Ecru from Dharma Trading Company. This is a pretty light color and I use this just to add a little bit of added dimension to my geode shirts. I'm going to put the shirt aside and allow all the ice to melt. After the first layer of ice melted, the dye looked like it was going through the shirt pretty well, but there was still quite a bit of undissolved dye left sitting on top of the shirt. So I added an additional layer of ice and continued to let the shirt process. After the second layer of ice melted, I let the shirt process for another 24 hours. To rinse the shirt, I took it to my utility sink and began rinsing it in cold water. I started rinsing in cold water to rinse out the soda ash that was in the shirt. Then I untied the shirt and continued rinsing but I gradually warmed the water up to hot to rinse out any of the dye that didn't react with the shirt. After rinsing for a while, I went ahead and decided to soak the shirt. So I ran some hot water in my utility sink, added a little bit of Blue Dawn dish detergent, and I allowed the shirt to soak. When the water cooled off, I changed out the water a couple more times until it was almost clear. Then I put the shirt into my washing machine and I washed it on a hot water cycle along with a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent. And after the shirt was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. So what do you think? I personally love the shirt. I love the color combination especially. I think the teals and the blues work really well with each other. I also think I got really good color saturation in the shirt. There is white left in the shirt, but that was from the sinew, so those were intentional white lines. The rest of the shirt and the areas in between all the geodes, I love the watercolor effect in those areas. So overall, I really like the shirt. But drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think about it. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day.